So introduction of a new chapter. This is one of the biggest chapters in this whole DVDs, DVD because um, it, we stressed how, how often the Leningrad system is being played with white. Well, in this chapter, we're going to take a look at other systems that are really, really popular nowadays. And you've stressed it a, a few times already. One of the, the main options white has here is to play the move bishop f4. So that's one of the biggest ones. And it's also the ones that, I, that I, I, I got against me most of the time. So if you think about it statistically, I think the Leningrad system, the main line, you will get most often. But this chapter is the second one. I think I, I yeah I mean I agree I mean you know Bishop F4 is so popular now and a lot of people may have brought my chess play video on the London system with this move so they'll be playing this as white and one of the most common questions I get is what you, what Dutch setup do you play against this Bishop F4 and uh, yeah. you know this is what we're we're really going to look at both of us are going to give us some ideas here because this is a new development this is something to update the previous um, DVD I did, uh, The Killer Dutch. Uh, so this is really modern, important now. Not so modern when I did the Dutch video about 10 years ago. Um, and from a personal point of view, I normally start with playing in this position 1e6 uh, to play the classical Dutch to avoid a lot of these second moves alternatives. So one thing I'm particularly looking, looking forward to and interested in and I did give some suggestions in, in my original Killer Dutch, but that was a long time ago, is what moves, and there's a couple of moves that scare me, I'll be honest. Bishop F4 doesn't actually scare me so much, but Knight C3 and, and yeah. Bishop G5 are scary. And these are really important because they happen often and, and you really want to be confident when you face them in order that you can play f5 on move one. This is my honest opinion. What scares me is Knight C3 and Bishop G5 the most. And I want to be confident for myself to be able to play one f5. Yeah. You're going to you're going to teach me how to be confident here. And yeah. again, this is updated on the Killer Dutch. This is a really important chapter, which I think anyone who's got the Killer Dutch will will see as the latest developments. And I'm really looking forward to what you've got up your sleeve here. Basically. Yeah, I hope I can show yeah. you uh, some good lines here so. because yeah. my opinion is that that Bishop f4 is is the most dangerous one actually. Okay. And Bishop g5 is very critical as well, but. Knight c3, I, I think I got that covered pretty well nowadays. Okay. I, I played some 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 games against good players against this, and I've got found some ideas, some setups to to really deal with this variation. And actually, this is what what we're going to start with, sure. Because this is the line that that most uh, players who, who who try to build a repertoire with one d4 with this is what they often go for because it's a very uh, how do you say a standalone option to play for you get you get very different positions from for example the the mainline leningrad and we this time we cannot play like with g6 we have to adapt again yeah and we have to play differently yeah here. so this this will be one of this will be the first uh, line we're going to take a look at and later we're going to address the bishop f4 and bishop g5 lines yeah. should should note that staunton gambit which is a second move alternative and other second move alternatives which are important you know not ridiculous we're going to look at in the gambit section so not yeah, here but that's the gambit section exactly and, i mean to me as a dutch player who plays the classical dutch the stonewall dutch and now the leningrad dutch um this move f5 if you want to get a leningrad dutch the difference is you have to play f5 and move one. If you want to play a stone wall Dutch or the classical Dutch, you can play e6 and move one. But in order to get Leningrad, you have to go f5. Yes. So if I can solve this problem of f5, it not just gives me the option of playing the Leningrad confidently, but it also gives me the option of playing my other two Dutches confidently. And another problem with playing e6 here, we'll talk about move orders a bit later on, is that of course you have to learn the French, which I play, so I'm all right. But e4, you have to be a French defense player. So this is not everyone's cup of tea so no. this is really important chapter and we're going to spend a lot of time uh, updating on on the killer dutch yeah. and telling you what you need to know i think roland's here actually if i can add to that i, I used to be a, a kind of a modern play well not I, I wasn't a modern player but i sometimes try to get a perk in or a, or a um, how do you say i try to deviate you know i try to adjust to what my opponent plays and i try to play the move d6 for example first but the problem is that if you play knight f3 now, mm. and I wasn't afraid to play 
e against e4 because I I was going for this this Philidor setup basically, and <coughs> but after knight f3 you can't play f5 anymore simply because now white gets to play knight c3 and right. you will see in the other in the first part section where we're going to address <coughs> d4 f4 knight c3 white d6 is not a very good move yeah so this 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 is i'm looking forward to this one for me most important chapter and uh i think we're gonna move we we'll move on on to what what move we're looking at knight c3 you've already mentioned first first so. knight c3 so, i think it's yeah. the most it's the it's the the, yeah. the one that they choose yeah. first basically yeah. so let's let's go over there now yeah <laughs> 